Hey everyone, on April 11, 2019, an Israeli spacecraft named Bereshit set out to land on the surface of the moon. Now on board that spacecraft, they had a sort of backup of planet Earth. They had on board human DNA, they had 30 million pages of information, and they also had a sample of one of Earth's most resilient animals called water bears or tardigrades. Now these are little tiny animals that can survive extreme conditions. Supposedly they can survive without any water, they can survive without any air, but unfortunately that Bereshit spacecraft crashed on the surface of the moon. So now we have these samples of tardigrades spread on the surface of the moon. The question is, are they going to survive? Well today I have a sample of these tardigrades, or water bears as they're called and I'm going to subject them to my vacuum chamber and see if they can actually survive. So first, let's look at my sample and see if we can actually see these tardigrades. Okay, so you can kind of see in this bottle how it's a little bit cloudy. So these are the tardigrades in there. So these are less than a millimeter long. Now I'm wearing gloves here, but water bears actually aren't dangerous to humans. In fact, you've probably eaten them a bunch before. They're found almost everywhere in the soil. They're typically found on lettuce and you don't have a problem digesting them. And so it's not a problem if you eat them. It's not like they make you sick or anything. They live in water and ponds. So let me just get a small drop here and see if we can see them under the microscope. Okay, look. There it is. Look at it climbing. Look at that tiny little thing. That's a water bear. <laughs> there it is. Look at it crawling around on that tiny little chunk. Look how small it is. So tardigrades were named water bears by Thomas Huxley in 1869 because of their inherent pawing that resembles the clumpy actions of a circus bear or something. So each of their leg has four claws or two double claws that they use for clinging to plants and other substrates. This tardigrade or water bear isn't a bacteria, it's actually classified as an animal. It's what's called a microanimal. So tardigrades are so small, they only have about a thousand cells in them compared to our human body, which has 40 trillion cells. So it's amazing that this tiny little group of cells resembles an animal like this. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to be putting them in this tiny vacuum chamber. And I'm gonna be dropping the pressure down and seeing if they can actually survive. So I'll just stick this under my microscope and we'll be able to watch them as they go under low pressure. Okay, first I'm just going to put them under vacuum for a few minutes and then I'll let the pressure back in and see how they look. And if they survive that, then I'm going to put them under vacuum for a long time until the water starts to evaporate and even freeze. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, I'm at full vacuum right now. Got my cord connected all the way to my mini vacuum chamber here. Still moving. I got a better seal on it now. So we can see the pressure is at full vacuum. So the water's not boiling, but you can see it's quickly evaporating. You can see the fog on the inside of the chamber there. Right there is foggy compared to where the water is not. So the water's evaporating basically boiling away due to the low pressure.
Yeah, there's two of them now. Okay, so you can see the vacuum chamber is actually fogging up because of the evaporation of the water. So this is ice cold now. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that that water is frozen in there now. I think it might be ice, but it looks like they're still moving around a little bit. They've kind of rolled up into a ball now. Okay, they're not moving much in there now. Very slow movement at the low temperature and the low pressure. Okay, so there's not a lot of water left in there now. It looks like it's mostly evaporated. We're gonna let the pressure back in and see what happens. See if it kind of comes back to life now. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. There we go. Oh, they're moving again. Now that I lit the pressure back in, they started moving. I think because they warmed up now. So it's foggy. Let's see if I can clear this. And there they are. <laughs> so as soon as I lit the air back in, it warmed them up and they could start moving again. That's so cool. So, it's, so when they cooled down, they kind of went into this dormant state. And it looks like they're just fine. So it's now been 30 minutes since I started filming this. So they were in the vacuum for 30 minutes and they're completely fine. Let's, let's quickly drop the pressure and see what they do. Three, two, one. So as soon as the pressure drops, they kind of just stop moving. They just kind of roll up into a ball. And then as soon as they let the pressure back in, Now they start moving again. You can see there's hardly any water left here now mostly evaporated. Okay, so it looks like the water bears were able to survive just fine in the vacuum chamber. They'll most likely be able to survive just fine on the moon as well. You'll notice that as the pressure dropped and the temperature dropped, they kind of started going into this dormant state. They kind of just rolled into a ball and didn't move much. And that's what happens even as you remove more and more water and even dry them out, 
they go into a dormant state. So when these water bears lose their water, what happens is the water in their cells are actually replaced by a protein that basically turns them into a glass-like substance. And they stay that way until they're rehydrated again and then they just start coming back to life. So the tardigrades that are on the moon, they'll likely be there until they're rehydrated again. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video is out. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.